Here, do a teardown on this. But it's already torn down. I guess I have to put it back together first before we can take it apart. We meet again for the second time. All right, here we have the automatic card shuffler. You load a good amount of cards in the top, hold down the button, you have a blender that uh, shuffles cards. They just kind of interleave them and they fall into bits and you take out the stacks. Uh, there might have used to have been a spring mechanism. Yeah, there definitely used to be a spring that, that held this up. So, so it would float here and then as the cards go on there, it weighs it down and then you can slide it out, take out the cards set it back at the top and repeat. But that mechanism is gone. There's the little slots on the side here where that used to go. So if you use this now, you have to hold it and gradually bring it down. Quite simple there. Uh, I, I don't remember why this is on the teardown bench, but it is. So we'll hop into the teardown here. The tray just comes out, obviously. Um, you can see the gear mechanism. You can see what happens is there is this little lever, look at this one, that uh, kind of propels the card that way, and the little rubber bit there pulls it in through, and by them being out of sync, and eventually they'll probably drift out of speed, uh, it, it alternates which card kind of goes in there, and it shuffles them. If you were actually tearing this down, you'd have to remove the bottom here, take out the batteries. These things said that they expired in 2015. They still work great. So I don't know, C batteries are crazy. Twing. And then there are these four incredibly long screws that come out of the bottom there. Uh, yeah, it's unnecessarily crazy design, but structural. And then once you had done that, we can lift off the top. And here's the kind of sad part about the design. We have to torment the inner bits a bit. Let's say free one. Ah, oh, there we go. The top piece is not too exciting. It's just this floating card manipulator bit. Man, there's a lot of dust in there. So much dust. Wonder why it doesn't work. Movie magic, I forgot to take a thumbnail, now I have to vaguely shove this back together before I forget. We now return to your regularly scheduled teardown. All right, we can already sort of have a look at it, but let's put the batteries back in so we can really show this thing in action. How many of you viewer people watching still use C batteries, right? Wait, I don't wanna know. Okay, we can see that there's just a cute, oh, this is recessed, all right. There's a cute little contact at the bottom here that we simply push together. After a degree in quantum physics later, we've got the schematic for the card shuffler so we can take a look at how that plays in. What we will note here is that this is the negative of this battery. And so what's happening is we are switching before the motor the negative, which goes up here into the motor and jumps to the negative of the other motor. It's, they don't matter. Um, and we can see that the positive of the battery, which is black here, goes to the negative of this one, which then makes sense. A cross out in the positive goes to the pot of, positive of this motor and all the way over to the positive of that motor. And so there you go. There's the high quality super duper schematic thing there. Well, let's press onwards. You'll find a link to this in some article in the description or whatever. To take off the columns, we will have to remove the batteries again. And there are two screws in the center, which are for these posts in the middle. We're so artsy here. Free! Battery's dying, we gotta hurry this up. 
So now a post is free. We can examine it. You can see the motor is attached to it. Finally, they've got this little blinking square, which then attaches onto the top part, which they've glued a little bit. But they do have two screws and then a glob of glue. Who knows? All right, let's take this apart. That comes off. Attached to the motor is a little gear here, which then directly goes to you know, all that dust. Wow. Which directly goes to this small gear here, a little smaller, which then spins this giant one, which in turn spins this tiny one with the rubber bit on the front. So it's just a nice little linear chain action here. This is all one piece, the gear in the front and the card gripper. Oh, that actually separates off, although the the rubber bit is stationary, but you probably could still resurface it to some extent. The special gear is just free, and its post is actually permanently mounted in the center there. Um, yeah, so basically, I guess we'd have to clean out all the dust bits that's in here. Um, and you, if you were having trouble spinning, you could probably put the lightest amount of some sort of grease in there, being very certain not to get any on the rubber, thus making it useless. Yeah, there you, I think there used to be just a, yeah, there used to be grease, and it's pretty much gone now. So you could add a tiny bit back so it doesn't rub on the plastic so hard. I think that's what mainly they had there was a grease to prevent rubbing on the plastic there and screaming like it does occasionally now. Uh, the other side is duplicated and these motors have no marking but they're just a standard cheap DC toy motor. They come off with these two screws here although you would have to... Oh, it does fit through. Okay. So yeah, you could uh, remove the motor and replace it, probably popping this gear off. This is going to be... Oh, it does have a marking. It says micro motor, because this is going to be a brushed motor. So in theory, you could uh, wear through those brushes, and you probably wouldn't want to try to take this apart and fix it, but that's that. You can see that this unit's been loved and that the posts have split open. Uh, I wonder if it got like warm in here because these are just like warped. Overall build quality, it's not the greatest mold on earth. I'm, this plastic's a bit cheap feeling. Uh, the gearbox is definitely acceptable enough. It it used to work, and based on those batteries, this is ancient. Oh, you can see some more of the grease that once was up at the top there. I guess the last thing to do is to look at that little contact under there. This I wouldn't expect, you'd have to clean. There's not gonna be much arcing at six volts. Nope. Oh, so there's a flat bar on the bottom. This little spacer. And this is bent ever so slightly upward so that it stays separate. It's held down at the top. You're just, uh, pushing those two bits together, which, I mean, that's just what a switch really is, is two contacts making contact. Oh yeah, and you can see the batteries are jumpered across. Well, I think that just about sums up what's inside there and a basic look at how it works. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.